Okay, any, any, if you're on English Wikipedia, anytime or on any page on English Wikipedia, like on the COVID-19 pandemic, you can click on the globe, the little Wikipedia globe icon, and it will take you to the main page. Now, the main page on Wikipedia, on English Wikipedia, is viewed something in the region of 16 million to 25 million times every day. And there's a lot of good information on this page. Uh, you have the in the news section, on this day section, did you know facts, links to Wikipedia's sister projects, the main page of Wikipedia's in other languages down the left hand side, a featured picture from Wikipedia's sister project, Wikimedia Commons. So Wikimedia Commons is where all the images, sound clips, movie clips, etc. All of that media is hosted on Wikimedia Commons. And you can see a, fe a, a really good quality picture that changes on a daily basis here. There's an area where you can find out about ways of getting involved called the community portal, a help desk where you can ask questions and some uh, links to Wikipedia sister projects like Wikimedia Commons, Wikiquote, Wikisource, whether we've got longer texts and structured machine readable data in Wikidata as well. So. And this shows you that there are a lot of knowledge is not well spread in other languages. Wikipedia has got 6 million articles in English, but a lot fewer in other languages. And there's the complete list of Wikipedias there as well. But every page on Wikipedia has is open licensed. It has this Creative Commons attribution share like license and it, what that means is that content of this page is available to be reused as long as we don't put a more restrictive license on it and as long as we are attributing where that information came from. That's why information that is on Wikipedia spreads throughout the whole internet on Facebook, on Google, on Amazon. And all and YouTube, all of these big digital intermediaries that we engage with on a daily basis. So it's very impactful to edit Wikipedia because that information can spread throughout the internet and appear in other places like Siri and Alexa. And we can always look at a page on Wikipedia, like the COVID-19 pandemic, to see how much it is being viewed. So if I click on the view history, the view history tab always shows the editing history very transparently about who edited the page, when, uh, you know, what time and date, the username of that editor, a talk page where I can message them, their contribution history, the, all the edits they've made, the size of the edit, if, if edits have been, text has been removed or added, and a little edit summary as to what change was made, just to, to help see very clearly when certain changes were made. But you can use the compare selected revisions to compare two different times of page and the changes that were made. But also, these are permanent links. So no matter what changes happen, to a page, we always have a record of what change was made for that period of time. So it's all of these are permanent links. So there's always a very transparent history to the page. But also on this page, you can click on page views and it will show you how many people have been viewing and reading the content over time. So here is the COVID-19 pandemic. And we can see it all uh, covering the 
2015 to 2020 period. Obviously, uh, COVID relatively new concept. So let's see what comes up. Hopefully, it will come up soon. But this, this is a there we go. So there's a huge spike there. But page views, 13 million page views. Daily average of almost 7,000 people coming to this page for information. So there is a lot of agency to contributing to Wikipedia. But if I go back to the front page, clicking the globe. Okay, it's hopefully coming. What is also good about the front page is that the featured article, these are the best quality articles on Wikipedia and they change daily. So the featured articles are the best of the best on English Wikipedia. So if I click into Michelle Williams, today's featured article, we can look at the main elements that go into putting an article together. So one thing to note as well is if you're looking for an exemplar article on a topic that you're interested in, you can just click on the little star icon. And what that will do is it'll take you to the list of all the featured articles on English Wikipedia. So there are 5,844 featured quality, the best of the best out of the 6 million. And they're organized by subject area. So if you're interested in architecture and archeology span or art or biographies or anything like this or civil engineering, then you can have a look at the best quality articles for those pages to get an, a good exemplar of what you should be aiming towards. So it's always good to do that. Plus, there are language links if you're wanting to look at the best quality articles in a different language, Wikipedia as well. So let's have a look at the, the Michelle Williams page. Just have a look at the main elements that go into making this. And what you'll see is that we have a top line, Michelle Williams actress. Now this top line is always what is searchable here. This is the page title. So that top line is always the wiki link, the searchable term that appears search bar. And then within the main body of the article, we have the full name in bold. So it's always emboldened the title of the article. Uh, birth date, death date, but you'll see there's no ninth, there's no th after the nine. It's just, we just use the number. We don't have th or st um, when we're dealing with dates. And what the first sentence does is it should make it very clear what the article is about and a when and a where and a what kind of setting the context of what this article is about and making it very clear why this person or this topic is important or significant remarkable for inclusion on wikipedia that there is in fact a notable topic that people will be interested in reading about it so that first sentence should do that but also the information box on the right hand side, what we call an info box. This also helps um, pull out the key facts from the article and makes it very clear why, the, why this person or this topic is notable for inclusion. And all of these facts are ones that should be in the main body of the article. Uh, okay, so we've got an image there, an info box, we've got bold, and then we have wiki links, links to other articles on Wikipedia, on English Wikipedia. And the important thing about wiki links is they should help the reader to, to go down the rabbit hole and find out a bit more about some of the topics under discussion, other notable topics. But you only need to wiki link something the first time it is mentioned. So if Larry Williams is mentioned more times throughout the rest of the article, then he wouldn't be wiki linked uh, further down. So 
And basically all the links in the article should be internal links. These are links to other pages on Wikipedia. The reason being is that if we want to link to places outside Wikipedia, then we create a new section called external links down the bottom. And these are just a short list of the most important websites that would help the reader find out more outside of Wikipedia. So we create a separate section for websites outside of Wikipedia. OK, so we have Wikilinks. We also have a contents box. Now, a contents box is not something you have to worry about creating because it is automatically created for you from the headings that you use. So we have one heading here, life and career, and a subheading. And if you have more than three headings, more than three headings, then this box will automatically appear as if by magic. And one thing to note is a style guideline is that when you have headings or page titles, only the first word is capitalized. So life and career, so no capitals for the rest of this. So only the first word normally. But the main thing is once we get into the main body of the article, we want to see citations backing up the content all the way through. So the citations going all the way through this, backing up what we're saying with um, information from reliable published secondary sources. So the main thing is we must, must, must back up what we say in the article with reliable published secondary sources all the way through. And we must, must, must also write in our own words. You can quote, quotes are okay. So we have a short quote here, but as long as we attribute where the quote is coming from, and as long as in the main part, we are just making sure that we are writing in our own words as much as possible, because even close paraphrasing um, counts as copyright violation. And there are tools on Wikipedia to check copyright violation. We've got more Wikilinks, more citations. We've got an image with a Wikilink there. Um, subheading, more citations, more Wikilinks. Subheading, more images with Wikilinks all the way down. And then towards the bottom, what we do is we can have a table or we could have a bullet list of their most famous movies or bullet list of their most famous works of art or their uh, publications. And then all of our references. Oh, are we OK? Oh, OK. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, is everyone else able to see and hear OK? OK, but let me know if you're having any difficulties. Um, at the bottom of the page, the references section, the references section is automatically created for you when you save the page. So if you add a citation, when you save the page, the reference will appear down the bottom as a clickable link. As much as possible, we should be using open access um link so that people can verify a bit more um, about the content on wikipedia and then right at the very bottom after all the references you have your external link section and you can create navigation boxes that help pull together whole areas of wikipedia um, but another way of curating the content is to add categories like the year of birth they're a living person. And the main thing would be she's a 20th century American actress here. OK, so those are the main things that go into making a page. If you wanted to edit this page, what you would do is log in. And what you would do then is 
I have two options, edit and edit source. Now I mentioned the source editor earlier. This is what the source editor looks like. This is what editing Wikipedia used to be like. You see this, the wiki code here for wiki links. And there's the code for bold, you know, little apostrophes there. And citations is quite complicated this way. There's uh, an entire citation here. That's quite a complicated way of editing. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the, the visual editor. Now, there's two ways of getting into the visual editor. I could click edit here if I have both options. I can go from edit source to edit. And now I'm in the page in Visual Editor, and I have access to some drop-down menus. Uh, it's just taking a little while to load. There we go, better. Uh, get rid of the little notice. And I, I can just and I can start making changes and start typing text. But basically, you should be able to be bold and edit any page on Wikipedia, as long as you are. Um, being responsible. So be bold, but also be responsible. Make sure that you are writing neutrally and adding content that is written neutrally and backed up with reliable published secondary sources. And because this article is in the main space and it is already live on Wikipedia, you should be aware that other people can also edit the page. And what happens is if two people edit the page at the same time, they can create an edit conflict. So if you have an edit conflict, what happens is that two people are trying to save their page at the same time. And it means that only one of their pages will be saved. And so some one of the people might lose their edits. So what I would encourage you to do is if you are going to edit a, an existing article, is insert what's called the in use box. And what you can do is click insert template type in use. I'll run, I'll run through this again so you can see again. But the main thing is what it does is it adds a box to the page. And really, this should be right at the top. This article is actively ongoing a major edit for a short while and to avoid edit conflicts. Please do not edit this page while this message is displayed. So what you can do is if you want to edit an article for a while, you want to be in the main space for a while, you put that box on there and that lets other Wikipedia editors know that you are working on it. And that helps avoid any edit conflicts and for any one of you to lose your edits. So I'll show you that again insert template in use because the article is in use clicking on that first link and insert and what that does is it adds that box but the main thing is people won't be able to see any of the edits you've done till you save the page so what you can do is hit publish changes and type an edit summary of added in use template. And as soon as I click publish changes again, then other people will be able to see um, that box. And then I can go back into the edit mode and edit with a bit more ha happier that other people aren't going to create edit conflicts for me. Because it's always a two step save process on Wikipedia where you have to sort of make your edits then click publish changes describe your changes and then hit publish again the edit summary is important because what happens is when your page is saved it then will appear in the page history as a permanent link with date and time your username and the edit summary will appear here. Okay, so that's how you would edit a page. Let's let's 
get your account set up properly and let you have a go yourself. Okay, so this is what we're going to do is like if you've created a, a brand new account, you should have a username at the top of the page in red, like mine is Stinglehammer. And it's, and it's important to note that a red link on Wikipedia is a page that does not yet exist. So red link is a page that doesn't exist. And the way we can make it exist is by adding content to it. So what that's what we're going to do. We're going to create these three pages that are connected to your account. A sandbox where you can draft content, a talk page where other people can message you, and a user page where people can find out a bit more about you as an editor. Okay. So let's let's create each of those now. So make sure you're all logged in. And the first thing we're going to do is create a sandbox. So if everyone can click on their sandbox link. And click on your sandbox. And then open it up. Now it might open up. To this kind of screen which is the old source editor if it does that just switch to edit mode to go into the visual editor or use the magic pen icon to switch into visual editing mode okay so what you want is the drop down menus to appear so if you click on sandbox and make sure you've got these top drop down menus and we're going to show you how each of those works. The main thing is we need to make a change. We need to add content to this page in order to turn it into a, a blue clickable link. So all I want you to type is put your cursor on the page and type hi, this is my sandbox. Okay, and this is where I draft content before it goes into live Wikipedia article space. Um, I'm, hopefully, I'm hoping that you can see this okay, but if you could all have a go at writing, at adding at least a couple of words of text by that box. And just let me know in the chat if you're having any problems or if I'm going too fast. But just add at least a few words so that we can now hit publish changes to save our page. Okay, and just let me know in the chat once you've added a, a sentence. Um, either by a thumbs up or a yet done or complete or if you're having any problems I made that slightly bigger hi right, this is my sandbox and this is where I draft content before it goes into live Wikipedia article space okay so let's go back to Chrome let's see where we are Chrome So Anastasia is done. Malini, are you okay? And Yuan. So we just need at least a couple of words. Not able to. Oh, any? Was there a problem, Malini? Uh, feel free to unmute your microphone if it's easier. Edit below this line. Okay. Oh, yeah. Just make sure you you move your cursor off that line. Uh, hi, Ivan. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Box here which says, uh, you know, there's the user sandbox of, you know, my name. And mm -hmm. then 
there's this edit below this line and then there's this option that says invisible comment okay so there should if you can you can just normally the edit below this line is just immediately below the sandbox uh yeah there's this a uh, very small box that says yeah so, you, so what you do is you just need to sort of put your cursor make sure your cursor is not on that box all right so just try and put your cursor to the right hand side of that box This is just showing me some other options. <laughs> can you just do it once again so that you know I can be sure about the way to go about it? Okay, so what I I just do. Okay, so what I'll do is copy that. So I, what I did is I clicked on sandbox. Uh, let me show you back to my oldest sandbox. No, okay. Should have had. No, it doesn't have that box. Okay. Go in to click on sandbox. Right. Click on edit to go in. All right. And it should open up the page. And normally, you see, if I click on here, if I click on the big box, it's selected. Right. And then what I want to do is make sure I'm selecting that. So I'm just going to move my cursor anywhere on the page where that box is not selected mm -hmm. so that I can start typing. Right. And just make sure that you don't click on by line box either. So just as long as it's on the actual page itself, you should be able to type. All right. All right. Yeah. I'm able to do that now. Okay, so we. The main thing is that it won't allow you to save the page until okay. you until you've added at least if you've added like one character of text, then mm -hmm. the publish changes button will allow you to save the page. Okay, so what we're going to do next is publish our page uh, or save our page. So if everyone could just click on the blue button that says publish changes. Okay, and it's always a two step save process so that we always need to describe our change. So what we've done is we've created our sandbox because we've added some content to it. And then we can hit publish changes again. Okay, and so if everyone types created sandbox and hit publish changes, that should be the sandbox created. And what you should then see is that your sandbox should be blue in color as a link at the top of your page. Okay. So hopefully um, everyone's created their sandbox. And what we can do is then create a talk page next because you've got a talk page where people can message you. But if you wanted to add any more content and draft any more content to your sandbox, you could just click edit to go back in and add more content there. But let's click on the talk page next. And this is where people can find out a bit more about you and ask questions about some of the edits or invite you to join um, Wikipedia, different projects. And your talk page doesn't have visual editor. So what we're going to just do is all we're going to do is I want you to just type hi, this is a talk page. Feel free to leave me a message. And then the most important thing to, apart from that, is 
anytime you're on a talk page, you need to sign your username. And to do that, you just click on the sign button. So you go, hi, this is my talk page. Feel free to leave a message. And then you've got bold, italics, and sign. So just put your cursor at the end of the line. When you've finished your comment, click on the sign button. So if everyone could do that now. Hi, this is my talk page. Feel free to leave me a message. So you're clicking on talk and adding a talk page message. Done, yes, done, yep. Great, okay, so I'm gonna go back to my talk page and then it's the same two-step save process. So what I want you to do is go to the bottom of the box and we're gonna put an edit summary of created talk page and then hit publish changes to complete your edit here. Okay, so just put an edit summary of created talk page and hit publish changes to complete the save. So we've added content to a talk page, we've added content to a sandbox page, and both should then be two clickable blue links at the top of your page two pages created on Wikipedia. Okay, did that work okay? Because if it has worked okay, what you should notice is that your username will have been automatically turned into a, a link with a talk page link and a date and timestamp there. Okay, let's go back to see how you're getting on in the chat. Yep, that work. Okay, good. Okay, if anyone needs me to go through anything, do let me know. Okay, great. So that's two pages created. We're just going to create our third and we'll have a bit of more of a practice with some of the other elements that go into putting a page together, like wiki links and citations. So if you could all click on your username, which should be the red link. And this time we've got access to Visual Editor. So we want to go into Visual Editor, which is either clicking on Edit. Or using that drop down, that uh, switch editor magic pen icon to switch from source editor to visual editor. So if you could all make sure you've got those drop down menus. And the first thing we're going to do is add a little box that says we are a new editor. So please be, be kind and understanding. Okay. And to do that, we're going to what we're going to do is we're going to use the insert menu so i've clicked username i'm in i'm in visual editing and i'm going to click insert and then it in the thing i'm going to insert is a template so insert template and the name of the template is called this is a new user if you could make sure you type that exactly as I've typed it, insert template, this is a new user. And then select that first blue link that comes up. And what that will do, will it will add that little learner box at the top of your user page. Okay, so if everyone could just now and just let me know if that box either appears or doesn't appear. Okay, great, perfect. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is if that box has appeared, uh, while we're in the insert menu, I can share to do the info box and which to remind you that the info box was this box on the side of Michelle Williams page that pulled out some of the main facts about the, her article. And you can see if I go in 
what the name of that info box was. It says info box person, it's a, and it's a template. Template info box person. So if I do insert template info box person. Now, info box person is useful if you're writing a biography. Or, and you see there are other info boxes for other types of articles, so info box film, info box musical artist, info box criminal, and so on. So it's good to have a look at an, an existing article to see what info box would be useful on your page. But because you are working on your own user page, the one that you should use now is info box Wikipedia user. Info box Wikipedia user and select the one you're interested in. So I'll do that again. Insert template info box Wikipedia user. Okay, and select the top link. And then what, what the info boxes do is they suggest fields of information that you might like to fill out. So we could just pick one like name and you could add in your name. Um, you could do another one for country, for where you're from. It will add a little flag. But there's lots of different fields you could choose. Lots and lots of fields. There's about 120 on these. You could have gender, birth date. It depends how open to be, but is a Wikipedia page. I would I wouldn't suggest that you be too open. You know, you can be as anonymous as you like on these pages. You could just have a picture of a cat. It's your user page. But this is how you would do an info box. You could just take two fields for now, like name and country, and hit insert. And it'll add a little info box at the side of your page, like so. Okay, if you could just try and add maybe name and country. Okay. Done. Great. Okay. Brilliant. Next step, let's add an image because that's another thing we can do from the insert menu. Menu, So we can do insert images and media. And what we're going to do is it'll just be a keyword search looking at about over 50 million open licensed images that are on Wikipedia's sister project, Wikimedia Commons. So you could do a search, keyword search for anything you're interested in. So I'm just going to go with squirrel. Well, there, there's obviously squirrel. So let's try a different one. Uh, Edinburgh. And it should show you pictures from that you might be interested in. So I'm just going to pick one at random and click use this image. And it should insert the image on my page and I can put a caption in and an alternative text for people with screen readers and then insert to complete. Okay, so if I go uh, adding an image next. Just any image you like, the look of, and then just drag, you can drag the corner of the, the image to a size you're happy with, and you can move it up and down the page as well a little bit. Okay, so let me know if you've added an image, okay. Okay, great, so that's, it's already starting to look like a page, but let's information on Wikipedia is organized by headings. It's broken down into headings. 
So let's create a heading of your username. So what I'm going to do is type my username, just put my cursor on the page, and you'll see that my username is in paragraph size. So paragraph is the normal size for text on Wikipedia. So we have undo, redo, and then headings and word size. So what we're going to do is we select our username, just highlight it, and we can change it to a heading just by clicking that first heading option. And that should create it as a heading, like so. So if you could all create a heading next. And then okay, so have a go at. Once you've added a heading, if you could add that sentence underneath as well that says, I'm at a training session run by the University of Edinburgh slash University of Hogwarts. And let me know when you're ready for next step, if you're all good. Okay, I'll come back. So, so once we've got a heading, and just remember that if you have more than three headings, then the contents box will automatically appear. But what we're gonna do is now that we've got headings, let's have a look at the next drop down menu, which is got bold and italic. So when you're writing the first line of your article, the title of your page will appear in the first line in bold. So to do bold, it's just highlight training session and change to bold. That's essentially how the visual editor works. It's just selecting the text and changing it using the drop down menu. So change that to bold. And then we can make University of Edinburgh a wiki link by highlighting and check using the chain link option and it should find that there is a page with name title and you can click on that link and it will turn blue and the important thing is that sometimes it's also important on wikipedia to highlight what wikipedia is missing so if you are writing about a topic but you notice that there should be a page on a different topic but you don't have time to write it yet then you can highlight it as something Wikipedia is missing in the same way. You just highlight it, click on the link, drop down, and it will return it as a red link. So if you could have a go at um, changing that line, I am at a training session run by the University of Edinburgh. And so bold, blue link, red link. So if you could have a go at that and let me know when you're ready. Okay. Oh, you can't see my screen? Okay, I'll, I will try to share again. Okay. So what I've done is I've added bold here and a blue link and a red link. And what I've also done is I've created two new headings, my example citation 
and references. Okay, is that okay now? Yep. Okay, so so uh, just to sort of fine finish up, it, we're going to just finish up with a citation. So if you could create a heading called my example citation, which is just changing it from paragraph size to heading size and do the same again by creating a heading called references because as soon as we save this page with the citation as soon as we save it then it will automatically create a reference but what it doesn't do is it won't create the references heading Okay, so if you could add those headings and that I read an article in the BBC, for example, and then we'll add a citation to finish. Done. Okay. Okay, Anastasia, if you're ready, the main thing is to bring up a different window. Like and go to the BBC News website. Just for an example of something to cite on Wikipedia, I'm just going to pick a, a page at random. Doesn't really matter what page it is, but the main thing is what we're going to do is we're going to copy the website link from the top of the, top of the page. Copy or Control C, and we're going to put our cursor at the end of the line. So when you've got a sentence you want to back up with a citation, you do a full stop, and then your cursor flashes away at the end after the full stop. And what you do is you click the citation drop down, and what it does is it will ask you, do you have a URL web address? Or if it's a journal article, do you have a DOI code? Or if it's a book, do you have the ISBN number? Or if it's a PubMed article, do you have the PubMed identifier? So if you have any of these things, I would suggest just use the automatic citation generator. If you don't, then you can just input the details manually and they'll ask you all the fields like title, publisher, date, etc. But the automatic one's a lot, lot easier. So if possible, use the automatic one. Just paste in your link and hit generate. And it will create a citation, which you can then insert. And if you want to, you can also edit to add more details about who wrote it, for example. But if you click off the citation, that should be it added. And if you wanted to use, if you were writing more content further down the page and you wanted to use that same citation again, you don't have to paste it in again. You can just click Cite, Reuse. So automatic, manual, and reuse. So once it's been added once, you don't have to add it again. You can just select and it will re-add it further down okay so if everyone could have a go at citations just paste in one citation and then we're going to be ready to save the page done okay great Good. Malini, did you manage to do that or you need anything gone over again? Okay, bro. Okay, so the main thing is now that we've had a citation, as soon as we save our changes, this citation will appear in our references. So what I'm going to do is just publish 
And we've done lots of changes here, but the main thing is we've created your user page and then hit publish to complete this, the save again. And what you should hopefully find is that your reference has been added at the foot of the page as a clickable link. Okay, and I have a contents box here up here because I've got more than more than three headings. So did that save okay? Okay, we're kind of at the end of the session, but um, those are the main uh, need to know information. Yes, Anastasia, that's correct. The references will always appear, but they just won't appear with the, the heading. So we have to create the heading, but the references themselves, they're automatically created and they're automatically ordered in the right order. Um, the main thing is if you're looking to move content out of your sandbox to create a new article, then we do have a little guidance uh, that we have put onto our YouTube channel about the process involved in that. Um, but that's, I'll put that in the, oh, that's the wrong thing. There's a YouTube video link here for if you want to move from your sandbox to the live space on Wikipedia. But all of the stuff we've covered today, you'll find a video on our Media Hopper channel, which I'm putting a link in here. Okay, so just feel free to sort of maybe edit uh, an existing page if you can, if you see that there, there's something that needs a citation or maybe an image. But feel free to draft content in your sandbox if you want to add more fulsome content. A new page only needs 50 words or more, backed up by three or more reliable published secondary sources. So 50 to 100 words in your sandbox, backed up by three or reliable published secondary sources so journals um, scholarly articles quality newspapers university level textbooks respected books with editor anything with editorial oversight tabloids not so much but that, th these are the main need to know information anyway um, so unless anyone has any questions, we can stop there.